Hello you lovely lot and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and boy have I got a good episode for you today. And why is that? Well, that's because I won a scroller box competition and I was sent some amazing goodies which I'm gonna swatch out and create a piece with today. The competition was a scroller box social media giveaway and some of you lovely lot mentioned my name in the comments and that led to me winning these so thank you. I'm so incredibly humbled and grateful for this and honestly it really means a lot to me so enjoy this video, enjoy the swatching and let's talk about what's in the box shall we? First of all I got another box from December which is great because I pretty much used all of those supplies up so I've got some more to work with. The additional goodies though are the Spectrum Noir metallic pencils and they come in a 12 set with pink purple, green, nickel, violet, light blue, blue, silver, yellow, rose gold, mica and gold and I quite enjoyed swatching those out. They were nice and opaque on the page, not super shiny, more subtle which is great because the next things I'm swatching out here are the Spectrum Noir metallic twin tip markers. You have a brush at one end and a slightly finer tip at the other. I have three sets of those and they have different schemes per box, one being precious metals, antique elements and rare minerals. I'll quickly run through those flavours so we have ancient bronze, antique pearl, vintage satin, rose gold, aged copper, tarnished silver, gold nugget, burnished copper, antique bronze, gold plate, silver ingot, pewter, red garnet, pink quartz, amethyst, blue topaz, green citrine and jade green and whoa I need to take a breath. Also included were the Spectrum Noir metallic paint markers and they are in silver, gold and copper, well molten copper to be precise and as well as that we are including a surface in there we have the Spectrum Noir premium black paper pad it's 240 gsm and there are 30 sheets to go out there. Now just to let you know I haven't swatched out those metallic markers because you would have seen that in the December scroller box unboxing and if you haven't watched that I'll leave a link in the description so you can enjoy that at your leisure. Now let's talk about the picture shall we? Now with receiving an abundance of shiny, pretty, gorgeous art supplies it only seemed fitting to have a magpie as the topic for which I'm going to demonstrate these gorgeous supplies. I'd obviously sketched this out beforehand and it was time to just start building those layers up. You know how I like building a layer up and this is no exception. So to start off with, those coloured pencils were ideal just to get a base of colour down, still allowing that black paper to still show through but also allowing me to work on top of that where there's not going to be any big ugly bits of paper which I haven't covered in anything and I know that's not the aim of the game here but I just didn't want that I wanted everything to just look nice and shiny it's not very often I do a painting or a drawing or anything really where I really go overboard with the metallics so this just seemed the perfect option so I used the silver tones for the magpie's chest as well as adding some of those coloured metallics on the neck and the head and the tail feathers of course because magpies themselves even though they do harbour and collect all of those shiny things they do have such beautiful iridescent colours in their feathers so why not highlight that? For the tree bark the mica and the gold coloured pencils just worked out perfectly it just meant I could add a little subtle bit of highlighting there to guide me through when it comes to using those pens. I was a little uncertain at first as to how the twin tip markers would work on top of the coloured pencil because sometimes coloured pencil tends to give a bit of a resist depending on what the components are whether it's an oil base or a wax base it tends not to like anything water based which is what the twin tip pens are. I was super pleased to say though that the pen practically worked just as normal on top of the coloured pencils, there was no resist, nothing, so I was super pleased about that. As you can see I'd sort of 
cautiously tested it on some of the areas, but I promise you I go to town. This is a very sparkly picture. I make use of the coloured pencils to fill in those larger areas in the background because I do want to try and create a bit of a sense of depth with this. It's very difficult with metallics to get tonal variations because the reflective surfaces kind of undo all your hard work. So again, having different levels of shininess with this prize kind of worked out pretty good. Once I'd used the silver twin tip pen, I'm going to refer to them differently the twin tips and the markers because they're both made of different kinds of bases. The twin tips are water-based whereas the other markers are oil-based so that's how I'm going to keep referring to them. Anyway, the silver pen went perfectly on the magpie's chest and I really like how I managed to get a sort of texture there of like the smaller feathers on that area. When it came to working on the black feathers, well Again, using those coloured pencils, as well as making the most of that black background behind it, they worked a dream. I love how I'd managed to get all the different iridescent textures, as well as creating a sense of flow in the directions that the feathers are on the bird's body. Loved it. I have really enjoyed using these. However, I am not finished yet. It's just all about building those layers up and building those levels of shininess up until they are at the desired sparkliness. That's definitely a technical term. So I thought I'd share this picture on my personal Facebook page because I just like to drop things in now and then. It's not necessarily an art thing, it's literally just my Facebook page. And first of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to my old college buddy who spotted this and wanted to buy it from me so that should be winging its way no pun intended but winging its way across to her this week and I just want to say thank you for buying it from me and I really do hope you enjoy it because I really enjoyed drawing it and secondly I just shared this image with my work buddies on our online chat and I want to say thank you to you guys as well for just your kind words you know it really means a lot to me one of my friends there asked if the picture had a title and to be honest I'm, I'm sure you guys know who watch regularly it's not very often I title my work I kind of just save that for exhibitions really however I did mention to them that I was open to suggestions and there were a few good ones but one that really picked my attention was pirate pigeon it really tickled me where I live there is a set of trees behind us and at the moment there is magpie wars going on at the moment and pirate pigeon it kind of just resonated with me because I see them hopping around in the trees and they've obviously plundered somewhere to get some shiny things to adorn their nests with so I'm gonna call this picture pirate pigeon thank you to my friend Nick for suggesting that it really made me smile now let's get back to the shiny things, shall we? So I have got the super shiny markers on the go here and these are just perfect to just add a little bit of movement on however the light catches the surface of the picture. They are really, really shiny compared to the other markers, which is just ideal for adding details on the chains, a few little sparkles here and there on the tree branches as well as the gemstones and of course our pirate pigeon's beak there as well as the fabulous pearl necklace they are wearing. As you can see now while the picture is static it's shining already you can see there's a good contrast there and I really like how that worked out. I quite liked how subtle the molten copper was. I was a little bit apprehensive about using it for the background and the actual branch that our pirate pigeon has perched upon. That's difficult to say quickly. You won't believe how many takes that took. Now, once I'd got the majority of shiny stuff down on the paper, it was time to rein it in a little bit, add a little bit more detail and hopefully make the image make more sense, which is why I use the Posca pen from the December scroller box that was included in this fabulous haul here to just add those details in. And it just worked perfectly. The materials that they use in Posca pens pretty much draw on anything too. And it just didn't have a problem at all going over those oil-based markers that I'd laid down earlier. 
That meant I could just add a bit more detail in the background so it actually looked like it was in, a, I guess, a bit of a distance compared to the foreground, as well as adding lots of leaves to the tree in the background there too. Just by adding all of those leaf details in there and having a contrasting texture really makes the foreground pop, don't you think? Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video and again, I just want to say thank you to everyone who put my name in that draw to be a winner of a scroll box competition. I want to say thank you to my friend who's purchased this off me and thank you to my friend who came up with Pirate Pigeon. I'm definitely going to play with these some more off camera, but if you want me to make more videos of these, please let me know. And speaking of videos, there should be some on screen now that I think you're going to enjoy. In the meantime, thank you as always for watching and your fabulous support, and I'll see you all soon. Bye!